All right, this is chapter 3 3 parallel lines and transversals. Please copy your cuts. All right, moving forward, we're getting ready to get into 3 um, 3. It's very similar to 3 2. Um, you'll see the only difference will be you have a transversal, which we had in 3 1. The only difference is the two lines that's cut by the transversal. Those two lines are now parallel to one another. Okay, so we're going to start with postulate number 15. Postulate number 15, and again, it's not so important to remember postulate numbers, but you need to remember what the postulate is called. So this is the corresponding angles postulate. And we need to remember what corresponding means. And it says in this, um, if we have two parallel lines, and our two parallel lines are B and Z, line B and line Z, are cut by the transversal T. We know the two lines are parallel because there's a key indicator here. There's a double arrowhead. There's an arrowhead to show that this is a line on both the lines B and Z, but there's also an, a, a line, or excuse me, an arrowhead that goes in the opposite direction from the end. These two arrowheads mean that these two lines are parallel to one another. So if you see that, symbol or symbols, it means they're parallel. Otherwise, they'll write it in word form and say they're parallel. Okay, so we know that line B and Z are parallel, and this corresponding angle, angles postulate for postulate 15 says if two parallel lines, such that we have line B and Z, they're cut by a transversal, and they're cut by transversal T in this example, then the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. We need to remember what corresponding is. In this case, for examples, one and two are corresponding. They're on the same side of the transversal. That means that angle one will be congruent to angle two. Right? Moving forward. And if I had these two angles here, let's just say I call it before I move too far. If this were three and four, we should know these two are corresponding as well, and both angles three and four are going to also be congruent to one another. Now, moving to our next section here, a portion, postulate number, um, parallel lines theorem 3-4, alternate interior angles, and again, I still have lines B and Z. I know that line B is parallel to Z because I see that double arrowhead again. And now, this time, we're looking at alternate interior angles. We need to remember what the word alternate means. It means opposite side. Alternate means opposite or diagonal. And then we're looking at the interior or the inside angles. So in this particular case, the transversal T cuts lines B and Z. We have angles 3 and 4. If both lines are parallel, only if they're parallel, and they're cut by the transversal, then that means that the alternate interior angles three and four will be congruent to one another. And we also have another set of alternate interior angles. If this were six and eight, they're on the diagonal interior, six and eight would be congruent only because lines B and Z are parallel and cut by the transversal. Okay. The same thing, I'm going to back up just a little bit here. The only reason why the corresponding angles on this postulate 15 can corresponding angles are congruent is because the two lines, B and Z, are parallel. When we did 3, 1, the two lines were crooked from one another or not. They were, um, they were not parallel, in other words. Therefore, meaning those two corresponding were not necessarily congruent. But when the two lines are Parallel, cut by our transversal, they'll be congruent. All right, moving further. Next um, theorem, theorem 3.5, is consecutive interior angles, which you should uh, remember are consecutive interior angles. Okay, now look at consecutive. That means if I have two lines cut by a transversal, and my two lines are again, that are parallel, our lines B and line Z are parallel, has that marker again. They're cut by the transversal T. 
then that means that a pair of consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Okay? Remember consecutive, the word consecutive means next to. Interior, I'm talking about the inside angles. So the next two inside angles are going to be supplementary. That means that the measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 6 will be equal to 180 degrees. So consecutive and interior angles will be, again, 180 degrees, therefore making them supplementary. Okay, moving forward. And again, these two right here, if this were 7 and 8, for example, these two are still consecutive interior. These two angles added together, if this was the measure of angle 7 plus the measure of angle 8, it's also supplementary, would also equal 180 degrees. Next theorem. Next theorem states, alternate exterior angles, and again, I'm still talking about if I have two parallel lines, line B and Z again are parallel, cut by the transversal T in this particular example, then that means that the pair of um, alternate exterior angles are congruent. So this particular example, I have angle 7 and 8. Remember, alternate means diagonal or opposite. And the word steer means on the outside, outside angles. These two will be congruent. So therefore, meaning the measure of angle 7 is congruent to the measure of angle 8. And if I had these two angles here, remember, these two are also alternate exterior angles. So if this were, these were angles... 4 and 3. These two angles, 3 and 4, are alternate exterior angles, and they too would also be congruent to one another. And they're only congruent, remember, because the two lines, B and Z, are parallel. When we did 3, 1 from our book the last time, and we did this, remember, the two lines were not parallel to one another when they were cut by the transversal. They have to be parallel in order for the alternate exterior angles to be congruent. Next theorem. Perpendicular. Perpendicular transversal is a transversal is perpendicular to one, excuse me, one of the two parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other. For example, I have H and K on this one. They have different names on this one. Line H is parallel to line K because I have, again, that symbol. It's cut by the transversal J. The transversal J forms a perpendicular line with line H and K. Okay? And because it forms a perpendicular line, angle, excuse me, a perpendicular angle with H, and because line H is parallel to K, that automatically means that line J is going to form perpendicular angles with line K as well. So if a transversal, which is the J in this example, if the transversal J in this example is perpendicular to one of the two parallel lines, then it's automatically going to be perpendicular to the second. So it's perpendicular to the first, which is line H, it will be perpendicular to the second K, right? And just remember, when I have perpendicular, be perpendicular on the left and right. Both angles are 90 degrees and perpendicular, okay? Moving forward. Let's see. And before I go too far, I just wanted to remind and say that uh, transversal J is perpendicular K. Remember, that symbol for perpendicular looks like an upside-down T, and I could also say J is perpendicular to H. Right. Here's a proof. Now we're getting ready to do a proof writing. You have got to commit to memory this, this postulate and theorems I've just covered in order for you to be able to correctly and effectively write proofs. So here I have, I'm going to prove that alternate interior angles theorem and I'm given this information. I'm told that line P is parallel to line Q. There's my symbol for parallelism, okay? We're asked to prove that angle one is congruent to angle two. Okay, we're asked to prove that. 
Now we've got to go back into those steps that we learned in chapter two with proving, uh, writing a proof. Step one, we write down the given. Okay, it's given to us and we draw a diagram. It is drawn for us, so all we have to do is copy it. Step two, we write down what are we asked to prove. We're asked to prove that angle one is congruent to angle two. Okay? And finally, step three, we, we call in our head, we say, hmm, what information when I'm looking at this will prove that angles one and two are going to be what? congruent to one another. Well, when I look at it, I immediately start thinking to myself, wow, I see two and three are vertical angles. I see vertical angles might be able to use, and then once I prove that these are congruent by vertical angles, perhaps, I'm just throwing out some ideas. I know next, I see that these two angles, because that's a line, whatever angle this is plus that angle has to be supplementary. So angle two plus the, the unknown angle has to be equal to 180 degrees, and I can go on. These are just some thoughts, okay? We don't know if it's going to work, but we just throw out some ideas here, right? Just some ideas. All right, so we start with our statements and reasons. You know, you generally start with your given. Line P is parallel to Q. That is given. What do I see next, okay? Well go a different route, and I say that angle one is congruent to angle three, we just learned that when two lines are parallel to one another, the corresponding angles are going to be congruent. So I can use the corresponding angles postulate. That means that these two angles are congruent, okay? Here comes my vertical angles, okay? Angles two and three are congruent by the vertical angles theorem. And now I'm going old school with what we learn. Angles one and congruent to angle two because of transitive property of congruence. Transitive property of congruence.